What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another Avad review. Heartsteel Cup Day 2 of the first weekend was yesterday, and sadly, I did not make it through. I just barely didn't. I needed a good score in my final game, and I played 7 Heartsteel and died before cashing out and went 8th. It was a really, really fun tournament, uh, and, you know, I got to play with a lot of excellent players, uh, like, well, Kuhn was in the tournament, I don't think I actually played in the same lobby as him, but I wanted to Vodder view Kuhn because he had a fantastic day, you can see by his scores up there, 1-2-1, one, one. also I'll make my head a little bit smaller so I don't cover up this synergy, uh, but yeah, Kuhn absolutely smurfed on day 1 and day 2, clearly skill gapped a lot of the field, and... Uh, so I wanted to see, you know, what he was doing that uh, did so well for him in the tournament because I think this is a meta where, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about certain things being broken, like hard steel being completely out of line and things like that. But also, I do think there's a great deal of skill expression in this meta. So we're going to start with a four sentinel opener. I think a lot of people don't really care about this uh, Cassante unit as a headliner, and we're actually going to pre-level in this spot as well, looking for just something here, some kind of backline unit, it looks like. I'm um, going to roll our augments here, nothing too crazy. Combat caster should be pretty good with the Sentinel opener, and it's a solid augment in general. We don't really want to pick up like the duplicators or anything like that. Our item opener, oh, and we're going to we're gonna roll that augment as well, so I think he was looking at maybe a true twos here if he, uh, if he missed, but he ends up getting idealism here, which is a, a decent augment. You can put it onto this Cassante, you can put it onto this Urgot here. Uh, and be pretty happy with it. Item slam wise, so he had like the Gwinsu as a potential slam. Now that we have this Hodge, I don't think the Gwinsu really makes any sense, and also because we're item holding Urgot. So yeah, we're just gonna play this board here, put the Hodge onto Urgot. He's gonna do a ton of damage because Urgot's a beast. I guess if we hadn't seen Urgot, we'd have to play something like a Samira or a Twitch to hold onto this item, which wouldn't be as good. Uh, the Urgot was actually probably the best possible option as, as far as a unit to hit. So really, really nice that we pre leveled into the Urgot because, you know, pre leveling gave us the opportunity to actually hit that Urgot. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what we end up playing from this spot. With this Hodge Augment, you can kind of play most things. Uh, you know, in the past, you could play like things like Yone Reroll and Riven Reroll, but those comps have fallen off a lot. You can still play AD Flex with just like a Hodge onto a Zed, and you can also potentially Hodge Ezreal. You can also play like uh, Karthus Akali uh, from this spot because, you know, you can put Hodge on Akali, you can put Hodge on Diego. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. We do fight level five Pickle Onion, who ends up winning that fight, which is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Pretty pretty disturbing, honestly. Uh, and we are going to pick up a Lilia 2 potentially in this position if he wants to actually build it. Looks like, no, he's going to pivot down into just two Sentinel. Hold on to the set because, yeah, he, he really wants to hold onto this set unit for potential uh, Heartsteel later. And he, he actually makes the Lilia 2, which is kind of surprising because now if we don't win this fight, we're actually not able to make gold. I guess maybe he's looking at pre-level. Uh, but yeah, he does end up winning the fight, so he still makes gold. I'm, I'm surprised by that because... If we had lost that fight, I'd be curious what he would end up doing pre-leveling there. Then his econ would be hurt really, really hard. Uh, in any case, off Carousel here, we could finish up the Hodge. We could look for some kind of Rod item. Uh, can't finish the Hodge here. Can finish Red Buff as well with the bow. Yeah, this is a really, really straightforward, amazing slam on this Yorick unit. Or Yorick. I, I call like half the units in this game Yorick for some reason. Um, a really, really good slam on this Urgot unit. Uh, and also just, you know, a, a fantastic item in general if you're playing AD Flex, AP Flex, uh, anything. Uh, and we're going to get Country in here because it fits so well onto the board. We've pivoted almost, I mean, completely out of the Sentinels. Now we're just using the uh, Cassante as two Sentinel here, but it fits so well with the uh, the Mosher board already. It's almost like we're pivoting into like half of a Country board, but I doubt we're actually playing Country from the spot. Though I guess theoretically, right? Hodge plus this... Uh, this red buff slam could be country. We have glove open for potential IE, uh, but I would doubt it. Uh, curious to see what happens here. I would probably end up selling this Urgot pair because you have no guarantee that you can hit Urgot to, um, to make uh, to make gold here. But I'm curious if Kiyun, like how much he values Urgot pair, because obviously Urgot 2 is an insanely big spike. Um, so yeah, curious to see what, I, I think he's, I don't know, he's, he's waving this Urgot around thinking about selling it. I don't know if he, I mean, we'll see what he ends up actually deciding if it's better to sell or not to sell. This is a pretty close fight as well. Yeah, if Urgot could get one or two more autos off, we actually might have been able to win the fight. But yeah, he is going to sell there and pick up the Lilia. Notice he's been holding this Lilia basically this entire stage. Almost looks like he's really, really leaning towards potentially playing like a Karthus Akali from a uh, Karthus Akali Viego comp from this spot, just because I think that does make a, bit, a much better use of the Hodge than, you know, like the Ezreal Zed comp where like you'd have to Hodge Ezreal and it's like, it's okay, but not amazing. Uh, oh my god, that is a lot of gold. That's a set two. Uh, yeah, you end up selling the Echo here, I would think. Uh, and yeah, you're just pretty happy with your set two here. Picks up a Rod here, which is interesting. Uh, I guess you could end up just making something like a Death Cap for 
or potentially Karthus later. We don't really have anyone to hold on to it. Uh, and he is going to get Heart Steel in here just to potentially juice up the cash out. And yeah, he's even going to pick up this Heart Steel. Um, and he, yeah, he, he does make the Death Cap here. I like this. He's, he's also going to pick up the Heart Steel Aphelios here for potentially five Heart Steel down the line. Death Cap basically locks him into playing uh, around Karthus at some point. You know, you can't really play the Ezreal comp with this Death Cap slammed, but you know, he's holding on to all the units. It's a pretty good spot for it. Ooh, Freaky Friday and Roll the Dice are both two fantastic options there. He's going to opt to go for this Freaky Friday there. I think the idea being that it's going to be hard to actually make use of Roll the Dice and this uh, this Hodge augment. Uh, you know, you want... It's going to be really, really insane to have like Hodge plus Infinity Force on one of these, uh, you know, carries like Akali or Viego, but the Roll the Dice, you can't actually make use of both. So it actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, and you'd also be like Roll the Dicing a random... Uh, Aphelios, you know, that doesn't feel that that good. So he just makes the Infinity Force onto set here and has a fantastically strong board. 89 HP, really, really solid spot. Doesn't really have to roll or anything because he pivoted into the Aphelios and he found the set off of uh, minions. So yeah, really, really good spot to be in here. Uh, picks up a Nico in shop. though. I don't know if he can actually afford to hold it. Um, maybe he's just going to hold everything here. I would be it, it kind of looks like, yeah, he's he's trying to figure out, I think, how to... I mean, like, you can't really cut these units on board, but I also don't really feel good about not making 40 here. Um, it looks like, yeah, he's going to end up not holding the Nico plus the the uh, the Yon, which I think that's what I would go for here. It, it just seems a little bit uh, hard to, to hold all this stuff and not make 40. You'll be kind of broke if you do that. Yeah, so it goes up to 40. Yeah, I think this is a very fair call here. And Karthus on Carousel, there's... He's still got the glove open, which he wants to be Hodge, but he can't finish the Hodge there. There's another rod onto something like a Nico. Can't pick up the Spat either. Uh, he's just going to take Sword here for... I mean, we'll see. Could be something like an Edge of Night. Could be an IE if he really wants it to be. Um, it depends on how much he really values the extra Hodge. Could even be something like a Shoujin for Karthus, because we do want some kind of mana item on him at some point. Uh, he's a little bit broke this game, actually, surprisingly. I think it's just because his board's so expensive. right? He hit the... Uh, he hit the set two. He has this uh, two-star headliner on his board. Like his entire board, like if you count the gold value of his board, it's pretty high relative to a lot of people at this stage. I mean, look at the person he's fighting. This person he's fighting, their board is like 10 gold and, and Kuhn's board is like 20 gold. Uh, so it makes sense why we're a little broke compared to this person. We can't send it to level seven uh, in this position. Makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. And the nice thing is we're going to get this hard steel cash out, which is going to give us a little bit of gold to recuperate uh, that differential here uh second infinity force here i'd imagine you would just put it onto the set because you've already put one onto the set but we'll see picks up a thresh who could potentially be extra frontline not 100 percent sure yet but we'll see uh and yeah i mean we're looking to just four one or four two it uh depends on how contested the board is i guess we are probably not rich enough to four one it. i think we would you would just have to four two it but i guess we'll see how the rest of the stage goes and how contested this line actually is because he hasn't scouted too too much um, so I haven't actually seen like how contested this board is in the lobby though. I just realized we, we just fought someone with a Yorick on their board. Um, this is a great shot pickup for if you're playing AD or AP. He's got the uh, Akali here for this and he's even going to hold on to the Zed too. Um, but yeah, I mean, either way, you should be pretty happy with this uh, with this shop. And what he's doing here, it looks like he's actually going to four one it by, uh, by selling a lot of these units. He doesn't have that that much gold. Um, okay, actually really, really nice. He ends up picking up this Pentakill. Um, Pentacle Mordecaster, and he's rolling a level on seven. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, he's he's trying to figure out what his strongest board is here, and he's putting a he's, he's putting a lot of stuff in and a lot of stuff out. Uh, he really just wants to play this board, I would think, for the one round, and then he can four to it. Um, he's going to to fight someone who already has an Akali too, which is really annoying because we want that unit. But yeah, I, I guess there's an idea that uh, you could play around Headliner Mordekaiser, but probably not with uh, with these items. Best Friends tends to be good. Uh, the only problem is it might be kind of scary to position it with your KDA hexes, but we'll see. Uh, we're just going to start rolling here and look for some kind of relevant headliner here. Executioner Karthus is fantastic, so we're going to pick that up immediately uh, and just try to get into our board. Get the super fan units in, I would think. Uh, he has the Akali as well. We still don't have Gnar in on this board, right? No super fan. Uh, we're still playing playing a lot of weird stuff on this board, actually. We still have this Zed on the board. I think the idea is that Zed can actually hold on to some of these items. Uh, and he's going to opt to actually just hodge this uh, this Karthus here. It's a little bit of healing onto him. It's crit chance, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, the, the hodge Karthus actually looks quite good here, uh, surprisingly, because it's not an item you see on him very often. But pretty decent pivot. We're still, like, it's a little bit awkward because, you know, like, we want to, we definitely want to get this Gnar onto the board here. The problem is, like, then where does the Infinity Force go? I guess you can just put it on Mordekaiser. 
for now. Um, and you know, he's got the four executioner on the board. It's it's a very, very solid board. Like this is a board you could theoretically push to, to level nine on with this amount of HP. Ooh, he's gonna, yeah. I actually like this a lot even more. He's gonna put the infinity force on Echo. Because Echo doesn't have to stay on this board for a long time. He's he's just chilling on the board right now, but he can definitely come out for Viego later. So Echo can hold it. You don't put it on the Mordekaiser because the Mordekaiser is gonna stay on our board the entire time. And honestly, these Karthus items are looking really, really nice. The Hodge, Death Cap, and then, you know, the Archangel from Superfan. He's doing a ton of damage. Um, interested to see what he goes for here, because you'd want Viego out in the promise. You just don't have Viegos at this point. So, I don't know. You could go for something like a Warmonk to have more frontline. Looks like he just wanted uh, a third Hodge, but sadly can't get it. So he ends up just picking up the Warmogs here. Uh, and he's also scouting around to see how contested the board is, because there's a lot of people playing uh, this kind of stuff uh, right now. Um... Yeah, we end up picking up the Viego, but the problem is it just doesn't fit on the board right now. And yeah, I would think it would just be Warmongs, right? Fine item. Uh, and Viego potentially coming on 9 for, uh, for 5 Penta. Um, it it kind of looks like we can just push 9 here. I'll, I'll be curious to see if Kyun wants to roll more this stage, or if he does want to just go straight to 9 with this board, because his items are pretty good. That's what's sort of like enabling him to actually have a strong board. These, uh, these Karthus items are really, really carrying. Uh, that's another Viego, though, because like... Now he has, he has Viego paired, uh, and he uh, he also has uh, just a Kali one. So you could you could certainly see him rolling here. The only problem is he's scouting around. A lot of these units are contested. He saw a lot of Akali's out. That was at least one headliner, maybe two headliner Akali's. I, I couldn't make it out there because we're on 2x speed. But it's a little bit hard, right, to, to find a, an Akali here when there's potentially six out of the pool. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what Econ Decision Kyun makes here because I think that's make or break this game. He played a really, really strong early game. I love the items that he slammed. Uh, I like the items that he, the, the augments that he picked a lot, but make or break here is going to be how he spends his econ, you know, like right now. Ooh, Viego 2, that is a, that is a really, really big hit though. He didn't have to roll all for that, so now he can just potentially play this Viego on his board. He's thinking about potentially even putting super fan. He was, he was certainly thinking about it. I would definitely be looking at just cutting this echo at this point, um, but he's looking at potentially something else. And wow, he gets a Hodge dropped and a Nico 2. Oh my God. Uh, so now he can just, uh, I mean, just put good items on the Viego, Hodge, Hodge Sterex, yeah, on, and uh, Infinity Force onto him, Warmogs onto the Mordekaiser, and now we can certainly just push levels. So he kind of didn't even have to uh, to roll it all there to just hit these upgrades, which is really nice. I would have been curious to see what would happen if he didn't hit that Viego. I assume he would have rolled, I guess, for Viego too, because it ends up being a really, really big upgrade onto this board, um, but he doesn't have to roll for it. And now he can push 9, get in... Uh, a fifth pentacle unit ideally it is the yo rick uh because he just fits so so well into this board it's five and uh it's mosher and it's guardian um so hopefully we can go to nine get the yorick in and then play for a really really capped version of this board maybe get another hodge honestly and then uh and then play for that this hodge augmented this comp looks really 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 nice uh just because there's so many units to hodge and even the hodge on the karthus is like surprisingly good so i think from, from now on, whenever I take this augment, I'm just going to be defaulting to this comp. It just makes way too much sense to play it. Like, the Hodge Karthus has done so much work. Like, so much more work than I would have thought. But it makes so much sense that it's good, right? The, the healing is really nice. He guarantee that it gets the later casts off. It's crit chance on an executioner unit. Like, it, it makes perfect sense. And and it's even mana um, to, to get, like, the first Karthus cast off. So, you know, like, even though he doesn't actually have a mana gen item, he can actually get to two casts just because our frontline is pretty decent. Um, but yeah, I'm going to fight a board that's just on Ezreal 1 and the Akali was on the correct side that means the Ezreal's just gonna die immediately they do have a lot of carries though they had the Caitlyn they also had that random Aphelios here but it looks like we'll be okay yeah the healing onto ooh, unless unless Poppy's an absolute monster oh my god she kind of is one more Akali cast just barely wait what was that was that a I guess he lost that it almost looked like a tie um but I, I I think it was a tie. I'm, I'm not actually go back here. Did both of them take damage? It was. How was that even possible? It didn't even go to overtime. They just... I, I think they just tied. I've never... In my... I, I have not seen that in a long time. Um, I... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that, honestly. <laughs> that's, that's pretty incredible. I, they killed each other at the last second, I guess. Uh, we're going to pick up a Deathblade here, which I guess is just... I don't know what the Deathblade is for, actually. Was it on an Akali here? I, I think I was I think I was remarking at the tie there, but he ends up with an Akali here. So did he just pick that up from shop, or did he uh, he get that off the 
Yeah, yeah, okay, so it was just a death play to Kali because he wanted the uh, Kali here. He can push 9 here. Uh, roll to try to pick up something. Uh, yeah, he's just rolling it to 0 here, and he's going to death play the Gnar with the idea that... I don't know, actually. I guess that it's fine on him. I would think maybe you would just death play the York once you find it. Their death play York isn't, like, amazing. Um, it's like you could put it on Kale and then move it to York later, but I, I guess his... His evaluation is that Deathblade doesn't really do anything on Yorick anyway, so might as well just Deathblade the Gnar, get a little bit of combat strength, and oh my god, that Karthus. I, wow, I, honestly, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm 20 out of 20 Hodge Karthus from now on. Like, this unit is actually insane with this setup. Like, like what a cool Karthus build. I, I don't think this is one that, I. it's definitely not one that I've ever done. I don't know if I've ever uh, seen this build before. Mm, I really, really like how he's spreading his units out here. He's going to make it so the Viego is going to walk up the right side and give it a really good chance of dodging these first few Vexalts. Yeah, dodges the first Vexalt and then eats a couple of Vexalts. Really, really expert positioning from Kuhn here to win this fight. This is how you have to win the, the, the fight versus this Executioner player because it's so easy if you put your Viego uh, towards the middle to just have him uh, end up getting one shot very, very easily. So really, really, really nice positioning there. Uh, and we're in the top three already. Uh, now the question is, you know, can we play for first? And I don't know, Voidson is 87 HP win streaking. I don't know what his spot looks like, but it looks quite scary. So we're just going to roll down here again. Uh, no way we're pushing level 10. Just try to pick up the Akali to try to pick up the Yorick here. Uh, still haven't seen. Okay, now he finally sees the Yorick here, uh, but doesn't actually see the Akali uh, yet. And he does move the Deathblade over to the Yorick. So yeah, he just wanted on the best unit for a little while. I assume this is Yorick item, but there's not much that's great here. Yeah, I... He's going to go for Titans, which is okay. The problem is just on York 1, there's a very good chance that it's not going to proc. One more big Karthus ult, boom. And man, I really feel like this this the standout this game has absolutely been this Karthus build. Though we are going to get soloed out by an Amumu. This Amumu was just strong enough to kill our entire board. Pretty insane. Gonna roll down here. Still looking for Akali. Still no Akali too. It's just such a contested unit because this guy's holding it. And then there's that other player holding it. So... Just impossible for him to find the Akali too, but I mean, still, it's a top three, maybe top two if he can outposition this guy. Just needs to make sure that uh, he's not getting Akali. Really, really nice position here to make his units walk up the left side so that the York baits out the Akali ult. It's been two ults already, and this Karthus still hasn't get Akali. It gets hit on the third ult, but then heals up with the ult, and then one more Karthus ult. Oh my god, it one shots like half the board, but I have to imagine Akali's gonna finish this out. Oh my god, what a close fight. Down to eight HP for Kiyu and and still no upgrade here. So we're gonna fight Voidsin here. Um, we won last time, but I believe that was against Clone. I don't know if we can beat the real. It's really gonna come down to who fights Clone here between these two people, um, if uh, if one person doesn't fight the other Clone. Kiyun does fight Clone, which is a big win for him. So hopefully the other player takes more damage versus the Clone here. Maybe we can even beat Clone because we did it last time. Uh, the Diego bought some time. It looks like, yeah, we are going to beat Clone, which is huge here. If Senban loses to Clone, then yeah, it is a top two, though. Looks like, uh, looks like Voidsin is just very, 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 very strong. Gonna go for, yeah, the, the Warmogs I like decently. It was, it was stuck between Warmogs and Static Shiv. Um, I mean, the, the Static Shiv is probably pretty solid, but yeah, he's just gonna go for this. Uh, just barely one gold off. Well, no, two gold off of be able to being able to uh, to make this Akali, you could buy the Lilia and downgrade the Lilia, but you would uh, you would not get uh, enough gold to actually make it. So we are gonna fight uh, this board one more time, though. Now that it's real, yeah. Oh my God, it's it's just a massacre, and it is gonna be a top two for Kuhn. But really, really expertly played. I really loved this Karthus build. He just did so so much work with this setup. I really like the angle that we took from the augment, all the augments that we picked, how we played the early game. It's just a just a masterclass game from Kuhn on how to play this patch, uh, and it wasn't even hard steel. It was uh, it was this Karthus comp that a lot of people are struggling with, uh, you know, myself included, honestly. I, I have bad average placement on this comp. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch, and all my other links down below. Thanks for watching.